Hello, hello. Today I want to talk about the levels of meditation. What it means for me and how I explore myself, got to know myself on a different level of meditation. So I first started off not knowing, newbie, wanting to know about spirituality, coming out of religion. And so my first way of meditating was breathing. Just breathing, real deep breaths. And for me, when I was at this place of meditation, in hindsight, I could better understand why just a simple breath, when you're in a stressful situation, can center you and allow you to become one with mind, body, and soul. Because like, say for example, you're really upset with somebody or you see somebody that's upset and they're about to maybe get into a fight or something and they, and they take a real deep breath, they'd be like, <gasps> boy, I almost did something. And so what you can see from that energetically is because they <gasps> took a deep breath, they gathered themselves, they gathered their thoughts. And that deep breath is really what stopped them in that moment from striking that other person because it brought them back together. It brought that mind, body, and soul back together. And they begin to think better thoughts. They clear their body. Oxygen begin to be delivered to their brain and realize, okay, we really at our best of love, we're God, we're just having a human experience, it's not that serious, calm down. So that's what I learned from just taking deep breaths, right? But that wasn't meditation at its deepest form, it was like a, the entry level of meditation, right? Breathing. And so when you're in a certain environment that's stressful, or you, you know, need to calm yourself down because maybe you have an anxiety attack sometimes, the best thing to do is take a deep breath. That's why they say breathe, relax, relate, release, right? That's the first thing. The second thing on my um, journey that I learned is, is stillness, right? And what stillness means to me is the last video that I posted on my TikTok. I was teaching stillness. Te stillness to me is when all of these thoughts, because we're all energy, frequency, and vibration, right? So right now, my mind is thinking, like, right? My mind can is perceiving everything around me, like this flower pot, my refrigerator, this camera, this piece of paper that I just wrote these big bullets on, everything, my floor, everything. My mind is just thinking, thought, thought, thought. The comments coming in, right? So we do this, we think, like thoughts give life to other thoughts. That's all we do, we just be a thinking machine. So stillness is when you stop all of those thoughts, the ones that's going, you stop them. You just stop them. And this is how you do stillness. You get an object, you use an object, find any object and put your eyes on it. And don't take your eyes off of it. The reason why you're not taking your eyes off of it is because you don't want those thoughts to come by you looking up on other things. You want to center yourself. And so you're gonna find something to pay attention to, some noise. And if you, like the AC just came on, that could be my noise. You could use your AC kicking on as the noise. So now you're centering yourself, you're looking at a certain thing and you're listening for a certain thing, which is gonna stop all of the thoughts so this is what i call stillness this is you not thinking nothing the purpose of stillness in my journey for me was when i would have so much to do and i wanted to release the resistance of it being complicated i just wanted to clear my mind for a moment so i practice stillness so i look at an object any object it could be a light bulb you know from the light fixtures from the ceiling fan you know it could be you listening to your breath it could be maybe the sound of some music or whatever but what you don't want to do is listen or give 
energy to all of those thoughts that you just stopped and made still. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be thinking, oh, did I, did I lock the front door? Did, yeah, where are the children at? Is the fire off the stove? You want to make sure everything is okay before you do the stillness. Because this is being still and know that I'm, knowing that I'm God. This is manipulating all of that energy that's around you because really you're just energy, frequency, and vibration. And you have this aura of energy that's telling everybody how you're feeling and what you're thinking. So we just be reading all of this here. But if you stop this here, you can become centered and you get in the now. Because everything is really happening right now. The past and the future really doesn't exist. It's all about right now. So stillness is really, really beautiful when you have one of them chaotic minds, right? There's another one. We're going to go to the next level. So the next level of meditation for me in my journey came when, let's see, I finally reached out. That Oh, okay. That point of stillness. I have no thoughts. I can only hear my heartbeat. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. That's a good way to do it, to listen to the heartbeat, you know, listen to your breath, listen to the AC, just something really still and soft, but have that control imagination so no thoughts are coming in there. Yeah, when is yours going to get straight? Okay, that's not relevant. That's new to me. Okay. Oh, thoughts, you're here. I, I saw your comment. Thoughts over thoughts. I saw your comment about, you know, you needing to uh, work on this. Okay, so the next level from stillness is you having a controlled imagination. Now, this is when you're wanting all your <laughs> to stop and you want to clear that. You don't want all of your no more because all your is worry and problems and you want something new in your, in your aura, right? You want to quantum jump. This is what you, you do when you get to that level of meditating. It's called a controlled imagination. And in your controlled imagination, now, your eyes are closed and you're creating a scene. You're using all of your senses. None of your old th thoughts are coming up. You are quantum jumping to a new reality and you're creating a new scene. You are touching, feeling, tasting, smelling a new version of life. When you quantum jump or you do this controlled imagination, you remember everything about just seeing, you control everything about it. You remember or you can actually see the clothes you're wearing. You have to be in your body. And being in your body means I'm right now in my avatar body, I can't see my face. So when I'm in my controlled imagination part of meditating, I still can't see my face. It's like I'm embodying that state of being. So if I was do doing a controlled imagination of a version of me, maybe on a beach or whatever, I would be able only to see my arms just like I can see now. I can see maybe just a little bit of my nose here, you know, the bottom part of my body and everything outside of me because I am in this body in my controlled imagination. And so when I'm there doing this type of meditation, I'm setting the tone for everything. I set the tone for how the day gonna be. Is the sun shining? How, what, what am I smelling? Who's around me? What do they look like? What do they look like when they see me? Are their eyes gleaming? Are they smiling? Are they proud of me? How does my body look? Does, do I see muscles in my arm? Does my skin look youthful? What do my toes look like? Do I have toenail polish, fingernail polish on? What kind of jewelry do I have on my wrist, right? All of these things matter because you are creating the scene. You are producing this, right? And so in this controlled imagination, this is when you imagine whatever scene you want. Like I know somebody that's not healthy per se in their physical reality. But if I were doing a controlled imagination scene, I would be maybe laying down on the beach and I look, I get up and I drink something cold. It's a cold root beer drink maybe and I could feel the cold temperature from the bottle. Somebody just delivered it to me. 
then I can see these two people who I know, let's say my, my children, they're walking up to me and in their eyes, they're so proud of me, they're so happy to be on this particular beach just having a vacation. They're looking at me as a doctor, as a healer, as um, this powerful mother, they love me, they're so proud of me and my journey. They're so proud that I've healed and inspired so many people. And then I turn around and I see this person who is, was not in good health in their reality, but I see this person that I helped heal, right? In their healed state. I see this person happy. I see this person whole. And I see this person smiling at me. And in their eyes, I see gratitude. I see this person looking at me as if I helped them. And at the same time, I'm looking at them and I'm saying, but you were your own savior all the while. So I'm imagining the love that this person has for me the admiration that my children have for me. I'm imagining how beautiful this particular day is. I'm imagining the joy. I'm imagining love. I feel it. I can taste my root beer. I can feel the sun. I can smell the healing microbes from the beach as I inhale and exhale. I can feel the wind. If it's, you know, if the wind is blowing, I can hear the birds as they fly around. This is the whole scene. I know everything about the scene. And this is what I call having a controlled imagination. It's almost like, you know how you say in layman's terms in the day, oh, my mind just wandered somewhere else. That's what I'm talking about, right? So it's powerful when you do the controlled imagination scene in the morning and at night because that's when we're drifting into different brain wavelengths. That's when the subconscious mind is really wide woke, right? That's when you can penetrate through it and trick it and make it think that that was real and then it will draw that thing to you. So that's the third level of meditation for me. But here's the thing about that level. That level and all of these other three levels could instantly make you fall asleep. Instantly. You'll be to fell asleep and then you get up like, oh, I felt so relaxed. Did I do it wrong? No, it's okay that you fell asleep. It's okay, it's okay. Those, cause those are like a beginning stage of meditation. But when you really get gangster with it, baby, when you really get gangster with your controlled imagination ability, and replay that same scene that I just explained. For example, if you want a healing for somebody in your, you know, that's a reflection of you in your physical reality. If you loop that thing over and over, I mean like three to eight times before you drift off to sleep, <laughs> that's when it gets gangster. And that's the last one that I want to share with you. The, the quantum jumping one, the one that is so juicy and so good, but you're in the alpha and, and you're drifting to um, theta, state of being, and that theta going to make you drowsy like and sleepy. But no, 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 you got to replay that thing. You got to replay that thing a couple of more times in your mind. You got to hit rewind again and play the scene all over again. And when you begin to learn how to stay woke and loop that particular scene over and over, that speeds it up for you. <laughs> that intensifies the momentum for you. That's when you have successfully quantum jumped into another reality and you brought that thing to life. And that's where we need to be in our journey. So it takes practice. Start off with your breathing. Don't give up on your breathing. Breathing is so beautiful. Then go to your stillness of mind where you are having no thoughts. No thoughts. It's like you're stopping everything. God is not giving attention to anything. That means anything around you does not exist. It has no life because it only exists when God looks upon it. Then you get to the place where you have a controlled imagination where you can just quantum jump and you just can imagine things freely. But um, all of those three make you drowsy. This is just a recap. They make you drowsy. They make you relaxed. They make you 
um, feel good. They make you secrete melatonin, serotonin, all of that good stuff. Dimethyltryptamine, DMT, right? Because you have all of these abilities inside of you because you're God, right? So this here gets you to that state of being. But you want to be able to be in that state of being where you can loop it while you're meditating. Loop that thought. Loop it over and over. And once you be able to loop it and stay in the loop and don't start thinking about crazy stuff, that's the challenge. Don't start thinking about, oh, wait, tomorrow I got to do da-da-da-da. Why you imagining this person healed? No, hell no. You got to stay to the scene. You got to stay true to the scene while you in that precious state of being alpha to theta to sleep. Now, when you do finally go to sleep after you've done that, nine times out of ten, most often, you're going to dream about it. So what happens is, now you done bought that thing that you were thinking while in your physical reality on the face of the deep, the nothingness. That's where everything stems from, the nothingness. So now that you have it on your mind in your nothingness, you can bring it forth to your physical reality when you wake up easily. Almost kind of like that movie. Remember that movie? Uh, I think it's called Nightmare on Elm Street or whatever with Freddy Krueger or whatever. Remember the lady? She, they kept saying, whatever you do, do not fall asleep. Well, she drifted off to sleep. And oftentimes, she was so deep in. She was thinking about it before she went to sleep. She was so scared of it. So she had the dream about Freddy Krueger. And sometimes, she was able to bring back things from Freddy Krueger. Remember when she came back in the physical form? One day, she had Freddy Krueger hat. The next time, she had Freddy Krueger little fingers. You know, the little things he was killing people with. Yeah, baby, that's part of your superpower. You can bring those things that you're thinking of back here. How does it come? Because your subconscious mind gonna do the work. You ain't gotta do the work for it. Your subconscious mind, you just successfully tricked your subconscious mind into thinking that it had something or that you was experiencing something already. And so now the universe, so to speak, your subconscious mind has to make way for you or this particular person to get healed, for you to see that person healed like that because it already, it already thought you saw them healed. So now your subconscious mind, your faith, your belief have to make this person whole. This is what Jesus was teaching in the biblical text. By seeing people already whole. This is the power that you already have. You just forgot that you had it. And I'm trying to remind you, God. Trying to help you remember your superpower. And this is a beautiful way for you to tap into it. By having a controlled imagination at night. Not going to sleep. Looping it over and over and once you do that at night and begin to loop it over and over then you won't even need to do all of that then in the daytime you could just quantum jump you could just see people and you could automatically just see them heal see them bless see them whole you could see you and your life and the things that you want and automatically see your prosperity see your abundance see your new life instantly instantly because you have done all of the steps you already mastered the steps, and so now you're a walking master manifester. And that's your birthright, God. That's who you are, God. Thought by thought by thought, you're thoughting up your reality. Your habitual thinking is creating your reality. And so this brings you back to one thought, which was in the beginning before the, 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 the polarity split. It, it brings you back to that solid thought of wholeness, that solid thought of all being God, that solid thought of everything is perfect. And that's the thought you want to, or the wavelength you want to resonate in, in order for it to show up. You don't want to be the double-minded person who's unstable in all of his ways. You want to be one God, one faith, one baptism. Because a kingdom, when you're double-minded, a kingdom divided amongst itself, it cannot say it. When you're double-minded, now the thoughts of battling, oh, is she gonna get healed? Oh, is she gonna die? Oh, oh, oh. And so now it's like an energetic battle. Which one is gonna win? Which one is gonna win? Cancel out the negative and make it one thought. Cancel out the other way and make it only this one way that they hold, that they're healthy, <laughs> that is prosperous. That, that you got the job, then that, that whatever it is, cancel out the other thought and bring it back to one. 
Ooh, I hope y'all getting this. Let me look at this here. Comment. I just wanted to get that part out so y'all could kind of give what I'm saying. Let me see. Okay. That's me now. I'm going to try this today. Yeah. Yeah. So which one are you going to start with? The Monique, where are you? You still let, you have breathing, stillness, controlled imagination, or looping that controlled imagination? Because it's levels. Now, in, our, in me, in my journey, I think all of the levels are necessary. Just like I think religion is necessary because it taught me so much about spirituality. Just like I believe that getting tired is necessary. Just like I believe that eating all kinds of foods and getting sick in your journey is necessary. It's necessary for you to learn about health and wellness. It's, less, it's necessary for you to get to know without self. Oh, everything is necessary. Everything is purposeful. Everything you're learning from and everything you're winning from. Yeah. I could never use, I could never see my face when I'm doing visualization. Yeah, those techniques, you're not supposed to see your face because you're supposed to be embodying the state of being. You're not supposed to. That, that, because if you, if you see your face, that means you're not in the body. And so you got to be in the body because you need to be the person touching the, the mic or, you know, eating the fruit. You're not the observer at that point. You're the occupier of the body, but you're just in, just in a different quantum world or another energy space, so to speak. Because it got to be real to you. You got this got to feel so real that your subconscious mind know that it's happening. You got to trick the subconscious mind so much that it knows that it's happening already. Even if it's like something with prosperity and money or whatever, you have to be embodied in the state and touching that money or logging on to the computer with your password. And now if you're in your body, all you see is the computer, the laptop, and your fingers putting in the um, password. And then you see the screen that's telling you how many millions that you are trying to acquire. Then you feel the way that you feel when you see the balance on screen. Then you scroll through the balance and you see some of the transactions. You got to have that real experience in your human imagination. <laughs> yeah, you got to be like really tedious with it too. Yeah, hey there. Hey there, Charlie Wu, 1970. Rip Ike has a visualization technique. Entering the theater of my mind, the stage of my imagination. I like the sound of that. That sounds perfect. That sounds really what I'm talking about because it's like that. It's like a theater, you know, it's like a stage play. It's like a, a blank canvas and it's waiting for you to put something in there. It's like God in the beginning of the recreation of the so-called recreation of this physical reality. When in Genesis, it says, let there be. So that's you creating the scene, your theater, in your human imagination, and you saying, let there be, okay, let there be sun on this day. Let there be me with my polished nails. Let there be me with my curves in my body, my definition in my leg. Let there be me with joy. Let there be me with, you know, prosperity or whatever. You're saying, let there be. And so you're creating it all up in here. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's so beautiful. I visualize passing my implex oh okay that's a certification exam okay i visualize the exact shirt and reaction there you go yeah put put this the, the clothes on that you gonna wear that day your luck if it's your lucky shirt your your favorite earring something your deceased relative gave you or whatever <clears throat> excuse me that has like some type of sentimental value to you bring it on in bring your crystals on into it too bring 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 Dalton Thomas in there too if, if that's the type of thing that gives you energy look at Dalton Thomas that the one that told you you wasn't gonna get this particular thing or obtain this particular thing cinnamon in there cinnamon in there looking at you observing you getting the thing that that person said that they that you wouldn't get and then look and then and then imagine Dalton Thomas saying I was wrong <laughs> I'm proud of you. 
And imagine yourself feeling good just to hear those words because you created that one, Thomas. So you got to destroy him. So you choose the way you're going to destroy him. You created him through your subconscious mind. So your subconscious thought, thought him up. So you, you, could, you could put him to rest any way you want. You could decide in your human imagination that you're going to put him to rest in your controlled imagination scene when you're meditating and him seeing you with your abundance of whatever it is that you wanted to have. Yeah. You could decide that he's going to tell you he's sorry for doubting you. You could decide that he's smiling at you and looking so proudly because you could see the, the, the joy in his eyes. You could see the gleam of, of, of pride that he ha have for you, of respect that he has for you for attaining what seemed to be unattainable. It's your scene. It's your mind. Nobody can stop you from thinking whatever it is you want in your mind. You're creating your show, your theater in your mind. So why not create it? to satisfy the desires of your heart. Instead of rethinking what happened yesterday when so-and-so did something to me or being a fearful of what's gonna happen tomorrow. Oh, the rent is due tomorrow. Rewrite all that stuff. Erase what happened yesterday if you wanna do that with your controlled imagination scene. Yesterday you bumped your head, well, go back to before you bump your head, rewrite the story and write the story as if you didn't bump your head. And then after that, since you didn't bump your head, the rest of your yesterday was beautiful, which led into now today is beautiful because I never got my head bumped. <laughs> Whatever it is, rewrite the story. The world is waiting on you, God, to rewrite the story instead of telling the same old shitty story. It's so shitty. It's so old. How do you even remember? Why are you even remembering it? Why don't you erase it? Why don't you act so much that, that like it didn't happen that your subconscious mind forgets that it happened? And since your subconscious mind now is forgetting that it happened, behold, all things are new. How about that? Oh, 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 something happened when I was a little girl, a little boy. Something tragic? No, not my life. I don't remember that life. I remember my mother and, and father were there and present in my life. And, and, and I had everything that I wanted. And, and the universe of my subconscious mind was so good to me. And look, look how beautiful my life is now because, because of the greatness that I experienced. And, oh, I had the love that I needed. What are you talking about? No. Everything that happened to me was supposed to happen to me and it was all beautiful. It was all part of my journey of me learning and growing and winning and remembering that I'm God. What? You say something bad? Oh, girl, I don't know who you talking about. I don't even want to hear that story because that's not the story I remember. I remember the greatness because if I remember that shitty stuff, it's going to be embedded in my subconscious mind and my subconscious mind will always give me that in different characters. So why am I holding on to it? And for those people that sit there in the physical reality and say, oh, I'm gonna forgive, but I ain't gonna forget. Shame on you, God. Cause part of it is forgetting. Yeah, learn the lesson, but forget that crap. You don't need to know the gruesome details of when you got molested, the color draws you had on and all this and that and the dirt. Because in your adult life, what happens is you begin to not even want to wear them cotton and drawers no more. You begin to hold on so much to that pain that in your subconscious mind now you don't trust nobody. And you don't realize, everybody, all your reflections know that you don't trust people. But you don't realize that you don't trust people. Because why? Because it's deeply rooted in your subconscious mind. Subconscious. The hidden parts of your mind. Subconscious. This is why people on the tip to the top or even in the physical reality, they walk around and they're talking about, oh yeah, I'm the S-H-I-T. But in their subconscious mind, it's like saying, no, she's not. So all of us know that she don't believe that shit. <laughs> oh, she lying. Yeah. She can't even look up in her in our eyes when she say that. That's how much she lied to herself. Oh, poor baby. I hope she figured it out. Because her subconscious mind, that hidden mind, is telling the world something totally different. Oh, she needed to shut up. She, somebody got to tell her. But she, she just oblivious to it. She thinks she's tricking something. But baby, you can't lie energetically. 
because your energy shows up before you do. <laughs> you can do that lying in the physical if you want to, but, but we, we, we are seeing and feeling and experiencing your, <laughs> your energy, your inner God, your inner self, whatever's going on in your subconscious mind, that's what we, 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 we get to see it. But you walk around because you, you in here, you don't, you don't see that this is coming out here and, and it expressing itself to us as great as it is. So that's why it's so important to go in here and create a new story in here that you really want to be expressed out here. Now, if you don't go in here to get to know thyself, <laughs> then we gonna keep on seeing your zero to seven Zero to seven years old, old shitty program that you got from whoever raised you. Those limited beliefs and thoughts. We're going to keep on seeing that when you, when you come up in the room. No matter what you say. You can say whatever it is you want. But that's what we're going to see. Until you rewrite your story or reprogram your subconscious mind. Yeah. And it's running your life. Thought by thought by thought. You could, you could tell it today. You could tell it today. I am worthy. And it's going to, no, 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 you're not. You, you're not because he, it's going to give you a thought. And it's going to say, no, you, you're not worthy because if you, your ass was so worthy, you'll have such and such. Mm -hmm. If you were so worthy, this is what it's going to show you. It'll show you a picture of maybe, maybe when you had got molested or something. If you were so worthy, well, why the hell your ass got molested? Because you never got rid of that story. See, see, if you don't get rid of it, it's going to come, it's going to come back and it's going to try to play you. <laughs> it's gonna come back and it's gonna try to remind you it's, it, it knows how to humble you that's why it's so important to go in here and get rid of all of that old shit get all of them get rid of them limited thoughts all of them stumbling blocks that's stopping you from attaining the greatness that you want to achieve god yeah it's like an onion you got to peel back them layers and when you peel back one layer it might make you cry It might make you cry, but you still got to peel it to get to the core of it and heal it. But a lot of us covered up a whole lot of little hurt is in the core and we don't realize it's still in the core as our stumbling block. Oh, that was beautiful. Let's see. Um, um, since childhood. Yeah. Hey, uh, yay me. Yeah. And it happened. Just as I visualized. It happened like that? Oh, that's pretty cool, true. With the shirt and everything, huh? Man. Yeah. Stick to the loop. Yeah, definitely. You got to stick to the loop. Keep looping it. And after you do the loop a couple of times, I would say at least about a good five. Because you you, you want to you want to be able to stay awoke. You want to master the body in this journey too. It's, a, it's about that, that drifting is going to make you drowsy. But remember, there's a parable equivalent to this here. Remember when Jesus in the allegory text would go into the mouth to pray slash meditate, like right? And he would be there in this text so long that when he came down, the disciples or sleeping. Jesus in this allegory text was teaching us the power of the mind, the ability to have a controlled imagination and looping life to what you want life to be. <laughs> Keep up with the loop. Don't sit there and sleep and slumber. Control that thing. The ability to focus is key. In the law of assumption and the law of attraction, the ability to focus is key. Yes, it is. Hi, King B718. Good afternoon to you, too. I see. Yeah. No. Synchronicity with Malcolm. Mackie, it's about quantum jumping. No, I haven't. It's on TV. What is it on? Tell me, Netflix or something? Cause I don't need, I don't watch TV. But if it's on Netflix, I could do that. I don't know. But no, it, it sounds interesting though. You are walking man. Ooh, come, come, come as jump. I saw you are walking manifestation. I saw that a manifesto. There it is. 
I believe I need to steal this right now. Okay, yeah. Well, you worked on the breath already, Monique. That's beautiful. Stillness is next. And then you could start with the controlled imagination. And then not sleeping and looping that controlled imagination. And as you go, and don't try to rush this. It's all about the journey. You want to you wanna get good with all of these levels. Don't try to rush it. You have eons. You have all eternity to figure this thing out. Don't rush it. Enjoy every last level because you're going to find a golden nugget in each one. And each one feels so good. And each one is perfect. And don't think that you're going to ever get it, so to speak. Because I'm stopping at not sleeping, but there is more it. I haven't gotten it because what happens is in every one of our physical realities, when we time out, we give our life experience back to source energy. Source energy is just like a big ego, right? And so we give our life experiences as expressions of God to source ego. And with that experience, source energy becomes greater and greater and greater. So there's no it to get because source energy is magnifying the so-called it. <laughs> You see? So there's more to learn. And so not sleeping might be where I am now, but catch me in maybe about two or three months. Then I'll be back saying, okay, there's something else. You don't want to sleep ever again or something. You know, like you want to go outside and stop eating and we're going to just live off the sun. And, and that's the next thing. You know, it's always going to be levels, baby. We're forever students. So take your time and enjoy the journey is what I'm saying. Yeah, Yanni, you're so poetic with it. Oh, <laughs> I be in flow though. That's what that. That's what you said. Hey, Miss Being So, thank you for being here. Hey, Dion, thank you for joining. Let's see. Element, peace, more stumbling blocks than you need. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's not even necessary to be holding on to them stumbling blocks and didn't ask why. They ask why, but they never look in the mirror because the subconscious mind always tell you why because your subconscious mind is the seat of your soul right you ask it a question it's going to deliver you the answer and you're god so ask it questions ask it question you could even if you're unsure if you're stumbling you could even ask it do i feel worthy what does worthy look like am i worthy and every time you ask the, yourself a question, God is going to give you an answer. You're going to wobble. That first second after you ask that question, you just be still and look, look, listen to them thoughts. It's giving you your answer. You tell it, I'm perfect. And if you feel no resistance, you rest assured that your subconscious mind is in agreement with it. But if you start being like, well, you know, that. Well, when I don't wear makeup on, I don't, I don't know, because I don't know. I be trying to be perfect, but mm, when I first get out of the bed, my hair don't be, you think about all kind of silly stuff, and it's letting you know, no, you don't think you're perfect, because this year, I gave you that thought, so you could know that your answer is no. <laughs> and so if the answer is no, you can fix that real quick, because then you could be like, well, Show me what perfection looks like. And then it'll give you a feeling. Ooh. And then it might, it might send you a picture of yourself when you was a baby. Show me what perfection feels like. And then you might hear yourself as a child, you know, like Gaga and Goo Goo and all crying when you first came out the womb. Whatever it is that your thought will be. And then, 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 since you seemingly are not that, at least now you can milk the feeling of that experience and you milk that feeling. And now all you got to do is begin to feel that way over and over. When you say, I am perfect, you remember that thought there and feel that way there. Now, guess what? You transform the energy. And if you keep doing this here, and reminding yourself that you are perfect and you are worthy with a feeling associated to it, you've just changed the program in the subconscious mind. <laughs> it's that easy, but you gotta wanna do the work. You, want, you gotta wanna see God 
in your pineal gland, just like when Jacob in the biblical text wrestled with God, you want to be able to, to yearn to want to have that fight, to yearn to wrestle with God. I have seen God face to face and I have lived. That's you. That's you getting to know yourself. The God essence that lives inside of you, the kingdom of God that resonates within you, that only you can bring out, that only you can resurrect, that only you can make whole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, forget that the color draws your head on. I don't know why that's so funny. Oh. <laughs> I was like, the color draws I got on. What is he talking about? <laughs> that's funny. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, that was. I just be saying still like sometimes. And go out of the way to prove their own mind wrong. Yeah. They go out the way looking crazy to us. We're looking at them like, oh, please stop. Yeah. But just go in. Go in and, and make your mind. Really what you're doing is making, you're, you're getting the union. You're going back to your oneness. You're allowing the left side of the brain to be one with the right. You're allowing the conscious to be one with the subconscious. You're allowing the old contract or the Old Testament to be renewed with the New Testament. You are allowing I and the Father to become one. However you want to look at it. You're, you, you, you're centering yourself. <laughs> you're becoming one with divine. You're in alignment. How do you want to say it? That's what you're doing. You're getting back to the one. Holy Trinity, you want to do that one? But however you're saying it, I and the Father are one. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. It's a vibe. It really is. It really, really is. Oh, Sheila. Thank you for the follow. Oh, Sheila. Yeah. Your splash in the ether makes ripples. Oh, my God. I like that. It really does. It really does. It makes ripples. Yeah, baby. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Self-hindrance. Yeah, shadow work. Yeah, that, that's what they would call it. Hi, uh, in Jerry. That's what they would call it, the shadow work. You know, people don't really want to do the shadow work. They want to talk about shadow work because seemingly talking about it makes them seem like they may be doing it. But you know when they're doing it, because their life is changing. You cannot have an experience with source energy, whatever you call it, your higher self, with an angel, with an ancestor, with God, and your life not change. <laughs> you can't. And be the same person, you can't. No, because your life gonna change. You can't tell me that when dimethyltryptamine begins to secrete in your body that you're going to be the same. Remember that movie, Lucy? When that white uh, uh, powder that they put in her stomach starts to leak out and it started activating her and she started using more than 10% of brain capacity and was going to 100%. Her life changed, baby. Her life changed. She began to remember everything about her life. She called her mom. I remember that part in the scene. She called her mom. And she's like, Mom, I remember when I was a baby. And I remember our cat. And I remember when you kissed me. And the mom was, and she was like, I remember the taste of your breast milk. And the mom was like, oh, you could not remember the cat so-and-so. You were only a baby. No, baby, subconscious mind is infinite intelligence. It knows everything. When you tap into brain, 100% of brain capacity, you know everything. You know how they talk about the Akashic records? Oh yeah, right here, here go your record. <laughs> but you gotta be tapped in, you gotta wanna go tap in and quit lying and playing games with yourself. Because yourself know that you lying and your reflections are just, just reflections of yourself in your kingdom, they, 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 they're expressions of you. So they know you lying too. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But y'all be trying to lie, though. No, I get it. I get it. Say that element. Yeah. Hi, John. Oh, the comments jumped again. I missed a lot. Let's see. 
Yes, yeah, see. Yeah, it depends on similes. Can you go to a cave and live off a of breath? Yeah, you can, actually. Yeah, you can live without food, yeah. You can live without water, yeah, you can. That's how powerful the human mind is. No, I don't I don't subscribe to the, the you know the limited mindset. I believe if you could speak it, you could think it, you could attain it. Because we are boundless. We are limitless beings. Yeah. Yeah. Greater work shall you do. Shall we do? We're part of the you. Yeah. Yeah, you can. They have people now. They have Buddhist monks. They have gurus now that do that. Those type of people don't come on no TikTok. Some people, some people aspire to be that and then they, 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 they leave all that because in getting to that level, they look at it as if they don't want the attention like, right? They don't want the attention because they understand that part of the attention is connecting them to ego and they destroy ego. They understand ego is necessary for the journey, but they don't let the ego rule them. So they would not be on here trying to get subscribers, so to speak, and let you into that part of them. No. I've sat with, with one in, in this lifetime. No, they don't operate like that. They're powerful. And most of those people in their core, they feel like they don't really even belong here in the physical reality in a, in a, in a spiritual kind of way. They feel like they're not part of the world. You know how they say, be in the world but not other? They feel like they're not part. They, they, they normally like, um, what do they call them? Um, not a hoarder. Um, long, a hermit, that word. A her, they're like hermits. They're like introverts, like, right? They're like to themselves, like, right? They know their power, though. Yeah. And so, in, 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 I believe in the biblical text, it gives clues on the fact that these type of people are here in physical form. And it says, um, be careful how you entertain uh, angel, uh, strangers because you may be entertaining an angel unaware. They're present amongst us. All frequencies are present amongst us. They have people that are here in this physical reality that are only here to bring their light. They pray daily. They, in every aspect of religion, whether they're praying daily, whether they're burning a candle for good or bad daily, <laughs> whether they're giving devotions daily, invoking energies daily, they have people here in the physical reality that do this. They have people here that are not eating. No, there are people here that are not drinking, that are dead firm in a meditative state every day because we can do all of this. All is God vibrating at different frequencies. Every frequency in between this darkness and this light is here. It has to be in order for everything to be in balance because the world has to be in balance. God is not the author of confusion, right? <laughs> God has us underneath this so-called umbrella of the law of polarity, meaning there is two sides to all things, but all of it rolls up to a hierarchy of God. And that's simply because of the split that took place in the so-called beginning of this recreation that they write about in the biblical text in the book of Genesis when they say that Eve bit off that apple. She knew good from evil. It's like that yin and that yang split because before that it was just one. <laughs> Before that, they was just they were just beautiful in God's eye, and they didn't know that there was a separation. They didn't know that there was so-called man and the so-called woman. Who told you you were naked? There was no so-called naked and clothed. There was so, no so-called so feminine and, and masculine. There, there wasn't this right and this wrong. No, all was just God. <laughs> So now, since we wanted to play the game in the Matrix and in, 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 in no good from evil, so to speak, we wanted to experience God on two different sides, two different planes. So that means all of this here that's here in the physical reality, it rolls up to God. <laughs> good and evil. Church folk don't want to accept that. But you can't just accept the one part of your brain, the left side, and not accept the right side. 
<laughs> yeah. So, insightful. Let's see. Interesting. Can you explain that again? Oh, which part? Which part I was explaining? I don't even remember what I was... A war, Connie. I'm sorry. I don't even remember. When I speak, though, I just be um, allowing information to be flowed to me. So you got to tell me what you're talking about now. Hey, I'm in a situation where I know, but I don't know at the same time. It made me think of you. I'm V. Yeah, well, you know what? You never really going to know, know everything. You know, you get the knowing or the understanding when you're ready for it. You're not going to, the universe don't just drop gems or send you on a hunt for stuff until you are so-called ready mentally. Yeah, this is why you say in the biblical text, ask and you shall receive. So for those of you who have things that you don't know and you never ask your subconscious no mind that know everything, then you ain't ready to know. Because it's common sense that you got to ask. You got to ask through thought. You got to ask through spoken word and you shall receive. So if you sitting up there, that's why people stay so-called unconscious or sleep so long. Because you could even look at a sleep person. You could have a conversation with a sleep person and tell that they ain't asking no darn questions because they don't even ask you no questions when you're trying to be giving them wisdom or whatever. You will talk to them and tell them something that you think was so profound and they'd be like, yeah, but I don't know about that. Were you ready to go? <laughs> they don't ask you never question because they're not ready. They're not ready. That's why the biblical text says don't be casting your, your pearls amongst the swine. You're wasting your time. Them people still sleep. They got their alarm clock set up for another day. Maybe even another lifetime. The message for you. You ask the question when you're ready. You make sure you're asking every question you need to God every day with your subconscious mind. You ask them questions because God never asks himself a question that he or she don't know the answer to. Your subconscious mind is God. Your subconscious mind is your Akashic record. Your subconscious mind is tapped into all knowing, infinite intelligence, the superconscious, your higher self, the angels, your ancestors, whatever you call it, it knows everything. But you got to get to asking it. And you have not because you ask not. The biblical text tell you that. So get to asking. You ask through thought. You ask through meditation. You ask and then you shut your mouth up. You shut your mouth up instantly and you listen. And you pay attention to how your body feels. You pay attention to that message that comes to your mind. That first thing that came to your mind, that will you answer. That will you answer after you asked. Because everything is inside of you. Everything you think it up. <laughs> but you got to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see where I left off at. Hmm. Oh, man. It went. It didn't jump again. Okay. Let me go back up here. Okay. Here we go. I left off right here. Don't be scared, please. Don't be scared. Oh, yeah. Don't be scared. Yeah, because fear is the total opposite of love. And God has been giving you the spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Fear will stop you and be a stumbling, blow, um, stumbling block on your journey. Man, I love you. Oh, hey, KD. <laughs> you remind me of things I have forgotten. Yeah, I'm your subconscious mind. That's what I'm supposed to do <laughs> to get you to remember. Hey, John says outcast. Yeah, yeah, yes. Right, right. John the Baptist was that type of hermit. Yeah, an introvert. Preparing for his purpose to come. Yep, yep. It was only here for one one purpose and know that, that what that purpose is. And sometimes that person purpose just to be energetically. And they and those type of people they just don't fool with people like. They don't fool with people. <laughs> mm -mm. Cause you it's like yeah, you, you know, you, you and I are different. You, you of this world. I am from above. I'm from, I'm, I'm, I'm over here. I'm over here in subconscious. You over there in conscious. I am from above. He am from below. You into this physical. Mm -hmm. No, you, uh, I'm, I'm not going here with you. 
I'm going to be by my father's business. It's how they feel energetically. I'm going to be by my father's business. I'm here for this light. Mm -hmm. I'm just here temporarily just to bring light. Light alone. Yeah. You, you probably don't meet those people because you're not vibing with those people on those people's frequency. Yeah. You need to upload this live so it can get replayed and studied. It's schooling. Oh, yeah. I am. I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel. I'm going to do... I have a couple of lives I need to upload on my YouTube channel. I'm going to do that today since um it's almost the weekend. I didn't do that all week. I can hear you speak all day. Hey, Gwen. Oh, thank you for that. You're right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I hear you saying right, and I, I, I agree, and I thank you for that. But right going to be with the perceiver of the information think it's right. You see, because somebody could think that all oh, that I'm seeing is wrong here because their law in their mind is against it. Maybe they're still in religion, or maybe they just, you know, have a different way of looking at things. You see, I, everybody have a different kingdom, like, right? Yeah. So for, for those people, though, that don't resonate with the message, then it's not your season, this is not your tribe, take the jewels or anything that is of substance for you, chew on that, digest that, let there be meat, let that be your meat or your substance to go on in your journey, but anything else, spit it out. Spit it out. This is this equivalent to when, you know, the Jesus in, in the parables, they was like, if the prophet wasn't welcome, or whatever, shake the dust off that feet, off your feet and carry on with your journey. <laughs> yeah, just carry on. <laughs> yeah, just be cooking in the kitchen. Appreciate the nutrition. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I'm starting my meditation journey. Yeah, how do I learn to stay in focus? I want to learn. It's a controlled mindset. It's clearing your thought. It's using an object. We talked about that at the beginning. It's using an object in the beginning of um, to give your attention to. An object of attention. So your eyes can look at you see a thing. You start off with your eyes open in order for you to not drift when it's time for you to graduate to close your eyes. You already have it figured out. So you can pay attention to a dot on the ceiling. You can pay attention to the light bulb on the ceiling. You're looking at it and you're hearing your heartbeat. You're hearing your breath. So that way, no other thoughts are interfering with you. And if they do, you get back to that breath. You get back to that dot. You get back to that light. And that's the part of you learning stillness first. That's the foundation of it. You can't keep the thought still first. Then when you close your eyes, you're going to be Drifting over here thinking about the door, about the food, about all kind of other things, and then next thing you know, you sleep. And then you wake up and you're like, man, I must have did it wrong. No, you don't, you never practice stillness. You never practice controlling your thoughts yet. So that's why it's so important. I'm going to upload the um, video so you can catch the beginning if you missed the beginning because I talked about the breathing technique, stillness technique, controlled imagination, and then mastering to the point where you have the controlled imagination and you're able to loop whatever it is that um that you were imagining in order for it to come forward faster in order for you to roll into your dream state and dream it and bring it back through your subconscious mind so you could experience it and you've just successfully tricked your subconscious mind into thinking that you already have that thing that you were manifesting or meditating upon yeah Whew. okay god is hey tamika you know my middle name was supposed to be Tamika. They left it off my school, um, my social security code, so I don't have a middle name. How about that? But I was like smiling when I saw yours. That was just, that's what it was supposed to be. Yes, I've been asking, and it's all falling into place. Yes, asking you shall receive. But who you asking? You gotta ask yourself. You gotta ask yourself. The quantum jump and um, astral projection. Oh, shoot! Them comments jump again. Let me go back. What she was saying. She said, oh, okay, I read that. I can hear you speak all day. I read that. Um, yeah, to quantum jump and astral project. Oh yeah, that's quantum jumping. That's that's part of having the control imagination because you can't quantum jump without having something you're jumping to, without imagining that time in space as if it's happening right now. 
Like you gotta live in there. Like there, over there. Like when I jumped and quantum jumped to this house, I was walking around in this house. And that's how you know, and that's another way you'll know like when it's the right partner for you, when it's the right house for you, when it's the right business uh, situation for you, when it's the right job for you, because guess what? You've already experienced it. You already jumped over there. So when I walked into a model of this particular house, the first thing I said as soon as I put my foot in, before I, because I have like a little foyer thing where you can't see everything. Well, first thing I said was, this is it. And my realtor was like, you didn't even see all of it. Come on in. I'm like, no, this is it. Because I've already been here. So that's how you're supposed to be leading your reality, God. So when that man come that you're trying to manifest, that's him. When he opened up his mouth, that's him. Well, how do you know? Because I recognize him. I recognize his energy. Not to do recognizing no muscle. No, no, no. I recognize his energy because I lay down in the bed with him already. I held his hand already. I don't already smelt his ass already. In here. Because I quantum jump with him already. Because he's me. That's how I know. And so with that knowing, you just change the dynamic of your life. And that's what you're supposed to be. The master manifester over your life. Wait, this is my job. I know this is my job because I've already been in my office already. That's my office. I ain't been in there. But when you go in, if you turn right there, there's a little nook and there's a little cubby hole for an extra desk and there's a, there's a little mini refrigerator, right? How do you know that? Because I've already been in there. You create the reality by being a conscious creator instead of creating by default like oh well i think this is a job for me and oh i, I think he he could be a good man yeah he, he got a little potential i mean he got that crooked eye but um i could work with that you know <laughs> yeah sorry i lost connection that's okay babe so after asking don't ask again like i'm asking to relocate successfully to relocate to successfully back to back home you're asking to relocate back home so don't ask again no 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 wait hold up here when you ask him you asking yourself a question to experience a certain thing that's something totally different if you were trying to relocate back home you were supposed to be using a controlled imagination and quantum jump back home. Ain't no asking. Go home. <laughs> That's two different things you're talking about. Go home. Like, before you go to bed tonight, go home. What does it feel like to be home? Well, guess what? You put your clothes on. You tell me what you're wearing when you get back home. Wherever home is for you. You, you imagine in your human imagination you pulled up to this home. It still looked the same? Did the trees grow? What's the sun looking like? What kind of car are you in? Are the neighbors outside? Or if they are, do you know one of them? Have them in your human imagination say, Welcome back home. Girl, I miss you so much. I knew you was coming back. Come here and give me a hug. You create all of that until you get home. And that's the thing that you, since you're trying to go home, you need to be looping that scene of going, relocating back home. It, know that how. How ain't your business? You got to jump home. You got to quantum jump. Your subconscious mind got to figure out how. This is about surrendering. So you surrender this how to the subconscious mind. And you carry your eggs home at night and in the morning when you end this, this brain wavelength when your subconscious mind is open and you loop being home. So every night you looping. I'm driving down the street to my home. I'm in my body. I'm in this car. What's the car sound like? What the seat feel like? What are you playing on the radio? Who up in the car with you? So you got out the car. You Maybe you had heels on. I don't know. You, you, hear, you heard the heel hit the cement. What color are those heels? Are they red pumps? Are they stilettos? Are they sandals? Okay. We out the car. You're not saying this, but this is how you're imagining this here scene play out. The scene is playing out in your mind. As soon as you get out the car, that's when you saw that neighbor. You told The neighbor told you, welcome back. Y'all hug and all that. Then you... Walked into the house, maybe. The house still smells the same. Maybe the house had a maid. With, I don't know your whole business here. I'm just trying to loop a store. So you're in the house. Go to your room. Lay down on the bed. Oh, is the bed comfortable? 
What does it like to sleep there? Go in the kitchen. Eat a, eat a fruit. Sit down on your sofa. You got a leather sofa or cloth sofa? Take your shoes off now. You've been wearing heels all day. Oh, how does it feel to, to put your feet in the um, carpet? You're using all of your senses. You're gathering your feeling. The reason why you use your senses is because your senses is tied to your heart. The reason why you're doing this controlled imagination through thought is because thought is electric. It has an electric spark. So you're thinking about this in this imagination and you have this feeling about this because you're feeling the softness and you're feeling the love from the neighbor and you're feeling excited and you're feeling. So together these feelings are creating an electromagnetic point of energy. And once they meet together, you just energetically created a spark for your subconscious mind to make manifested in your physical reality. That's really energetically what's going on here. So you got to do both of them. And if you loop it, now your spark energetically gets a little bit more powerful because you're doing it again. And then you're doing it again. And you're doing it again. So let me tell you this here. This is equivalent to you going to work every day. You go into work every day, you wake up every day, you have your coffee at the same time every day, and you're in this everyday mode. You go to work, you don't like your job, but you go to there anyway because it makes money. You get in your car, you come home, your subconscious mind knows you're doing this. And it knows you've been doing it. Like for me, it knew I was doing it for 22 long ish years. Doing it and doing it and doing it. It know. It knows so much that I was doing it for all of them years that I would drive to work sometime and I was in alpha mode and my I was still going the right way. It just knew how to take me there because my mind wasn't on going there. My mind was on going my ears back home many mornings, okay? But because my subconscious mind knows this and it automatically does it because so much energy was built on doing it. I was doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And the energy of doing it was getting greater and greater and greater. And then when I was doing it, then I didn't even have to, I would actually do some things that work and I didn't even have to be thinking about doing it because I was just on program mode. That's energy that you conjure up to get to that place. You have to keep doing that in order for the subconscious mind to take over. That's the same thing. So now this energy for this new imagination thought is probably about this here big, but the one that you've been doing for 22 years about this here big, like, right, energetically. This is why you wanna keep looping it, cause you wanna conjure up more energy to make it greater and greater and greater and greater and greater. And so this energy now will become greater than this energy. You'll have so much more love and intense fire over here for this particular thing because you're born it. Because, oh, it feels so good. And, oh, I've been thinking about it. And now your subconscious mind is like, Oh, so this here, this here is no longer valid. We got to get this here out the way. We got to move this here where she's seeing. This must be her past. We got to give her this now. Because she asked for this energetically. And the blessings of God are yea and amen. She stopped thinking about this. She wants this. We must deliver. Bam, it's yours. <laughs> I hope you get that because that was good. I wish somebody would have told me that on my journey. I wish somebody would have told me that thing. That was good. Thank you, Source. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Where am I at? Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Someone inboxed my, me asking if they can give me a reading. Is it okay? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about it, Tamika? I believe um, energetically, <laughs> if somebody was to ask me, I'll tell you how I would feel about it. Let's do that. If somebody was to ask me, I would say, no, thank you, baby. Only because they asked me. Because I would rather be drawn to a certain person and wanting to. Like, that's why I don't, I don't be asking people, hey, you want a consultation? Yeah, I'll give you a good deal. Yeah, because I could see your trauma, da da da. Even though I see, I, I'm a seer. I can look at a picture and see what a person going through. I can look at a TikTok and be like, oh, bless her heart. Sometimes that's all I say, oh, bless her heart. Because I've been read everything. But I don't say, do you want a consultation? No. 
No. No, because you're supposed to be, readers supposed to be drawing people to them. So automatically I would say no, but if you want it, if it feels like something is there for you, baby, that, that was me. I would say no because I'm in this here place, but you on that plane in your physical reality, right? You have a different mental from me. So if it feels good to you, if you close your eyes and say, should I get a reading for her, from her or him? And you have no resistance, go for it because that's your flow. Do what feels good to you because you have an internal GPS system or your eye yourself that's telling you yes and no. But you got to close your eyes and be still and, and know what it's saying to you. But to me, mine would tell them no. No, thank you. Because I already know how to go in. Because I already know, even like, okay, let's, let's, say, let's say, for example, in the, in the movie, uh, Matrix, remember the oracle told Neo that he was not the one. And see, I know this about myself. So if somebody come and tell me a reading about, oh yeah, this ain't going to work for you, but this going to work for you instead, da 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 I know that I have the power to change the script, the script at any point of what anybody tell me. I know that I'm God in my kingdom. So why would I put my money on you telling me a script that way for me to change it and say it my way anyway? I know that my habitual thoughts win. I know that I create my reality, so what I need you for? I know that, 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 that there's power in my own tongue. These are the things that I know. So a doctor could tell me a shitty report today. Well, guess what? It's like, all right, doc, that's what you think? Okay, okay, I respect you, bye. But in my mind, in my mind's eye, all I have to do is go in. <laughs> because I know myself. Because I know that my habitual thought is my law. I know that a belief is something that I have told myself over and over and it becomes law for my physical reality. So I just believe what the hell I want to believe. <laughs> These are the things that I know. And so my knowing, my laws will prevent me from going outside of myself to seek the guidance for somebody else. Now, now don't get it twisted though. I donate. I have, there's a lady, Coach Renee on here. I seen her do a little readings or whatever. And I donated and I, I let her tell me what she told me out of support, out of love. And it was a beautiful message. But had she said something that didn't resonate with me, that I, or better yet, I didn't want to hear, I would have spit it out. Be in that place in your journey where nobody can tell you nothing. That way nobody can manipulate you. That way nobody can, 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 can sway you this way. You, you want to be silent. You want to put on the armor of God. <laughs> the whole armor of God. That way you'll be able to, to withstand the wilds of the so-called Lord frequency beings that's saying, hey, hey, I can give you a reading. Let me reach out and get some more readings because um, my, 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 my mortgage is due. Let me call, let me, let me, let me get in this DM. Yeah, because my cardinal do, and maybe I could tell her, yeah, girl, because I've seen the ancestors, I've seen the ancestors um, all over your bed last night. They look at your little TikTok and see your vulnerable moments, and some of them are gifted. Don't get it wrong. They look at your vulnerable, vulnerable moments and can read you instantly and be like, oh, yeah, I know you're looking for love in all the wrong places. I got a special word for you from the ancestors, from your grandmother that, deceased, that was deceased, and it's going to be forty nine ninety nine. No, oh, baby. I'm not, I'm not in it for that kind of thing. I'm not in it. Um, my higher self talks through me all the time, but I never, ever ask nobody, hey, you want to get a consultation? I don't, I don't operate like that. That's how you would know it's me. Then people tell me that they have another account. They have several other accounts that people be DMing them. I'm like, look, you know it's not me because I don't, I don't come in nobody DM. I ain't asking you for no money. I'm up here giving information for free. I ask you to, to, to look at my website. 
to buy something to heal your body, baby. But I'll never ask people for consultations and come, no, no, come hither. No, the kingdom of God is within you. That's what I want you to be, a leader of yourself. Just like in the biblical text, it, it, it says in the parable, if, if anybody says, come here, God is here, don't go. Don't go. Because the kingdom of God is within you. You have everything that you need. You have everything that you need within. Everything. And there's going to be a season where I'm going to have to get, get off of, I have consultations today, tomorrow, next couple, till, all the way to like Tuesday. But there's going to be a season where the consultations are going to be no more. And this is why I give out information because of where I'm going in my manifestation. I can be able to talk to the whole world. <laughs> so this is why even in consultations, I teach them everything that they need to do or know to stand on their feet, to be solid and firm in their mindset. And so they don't have to be rinsing and repeating. I, I teach these people. And even when they begin to come and be repeat people that I consult with, I'm like, hey, you got to do this here work. I'm not here to take your money. This is not something that I'm doing for another source of income. I'm here to remind you that you are God in physical form. So I need you to see, I need to see some work, God. <laughs> That's just me. I'm just a little different. Some people just take your little money. They just take your little money. I've refunded money before <laughs> for people that don't want to do the work. Because that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for you to remember. So, yeah, I look forward to hear what you're going to um, do with that, uh, Tamika. If you're going to do it or not. But ask yourself that question. Should I? How do I feel about this here? The more likes, the more algorithm moves the video. Yeah, yeah, it's a scam. Oh, somebody told, somebody told Tamika it's a scam up in there. I didn't see that coming yet. When the pure light... Hits the prism. Oh, the color you see depends upon where you're standing. Look at you. Hello, man. Yes, that's so true. Yeah. Hey, Emmanuel. Thank you for being here. Hey, Larry. Ooh, I'm behind on comments. Let me see. Let me catch up. Let me catch up. Wait. Let's see. Uh, uh, ah. Okay, here we go. What is your YouTube name or link? How can we search? YouTube is in my profile. Um, if you click on my picture, you'll see the black arrow. It'll bring you directly to my YouTube channel. But the YouTube channel is called Sword of the Earth Publish Publishing, which is the name of my business. Sword of the Earth Publishing. While I've been calling it Deja Vu. That's what you mean? Yeah, Deja Vu. Yeah, oh yeah, that's what you mean. So basically, you're talking about living in 4D. Um, hmm. I would say 5D. Can you quantum jump into the wrong reality? Yeah, the crazy people. I don't want to say wrong because there's no right and no wrong. You could quantum jump into a reality that gets a little difficult to return to this one. So like the people underneath the bridge, for example, they've quantum jumped into parallel realities and kind of stuck or the so-called crazy people. They get kind of like stuck, so to speak, because the rabbit hole runs really, really um, deep. Hey, Michelle. Hey, 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 speaking that thing. Yeah, how do you say that? Vin, vin, vian, vian, vian sui, vian sui. I'm trying. I don't know if I did it right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, so thanks for the confirmation. I already recognize you before I listen to your first video. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I love this lady. Oh, I love you too, babe. Let's see if I can say that. Vital divinity. Vital divinity. Vital divinity. I think that's it. Y'all be all fancy with y'all name. And somebody said me too. One million hustle said me too. Drop your gems. This is the key, y'all. It really is. It really is. Everything is so perfect. I say God is. It is. All things are perfect. Oh, I'm almost at the bottom. My home is in South Carolina. I currently live in. Thank you. Why did I think of quantum jump? Yeah, quantum jump. That's how I got this house. I'm telling you. I wouldn't lie to you. That's how I got this house. Wow, I'm so glad you broke it down. Very well said. I'm so happy I've been guided here. Oh, I'm so happy you're here too. Let's see. Yes. Hello. First time visiting. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Oh man. My battery is done by y'all. <laughs> All right, Miss Being So, Thank you for being here. Thank you for this. Haven't seen you in forever. Oh, Echo. Oh, I remember you. Thank you for the roses and stuff, Echo. 
Yes, I get it. I get it. I love it. I definitely got it. Oh, good. Y'all get it. Screen recording too. Oh, you did. Beautiful. Thank you for this. You are welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm not really enlightened with that area. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. But you don't, it ain't about being deeply enlightened in any area. It's about asking a question and just listening. Just listen. Start to listen. Start to listen to that gut feeling inside of you. You know, that tells you like to bring an umbrella. Or tell you don't trust this particular person. All of our lives we've been told the opposite. When we were younger, our parents and stuff was like, boy, quit that crying. A girl, stop crying and go, go give your grandma a kiss. And you didn't want to kiss grandma because grandma probably had them little chin hairs or stink breath or she was scary or had a negative spirit that you didn't like. But other people taught you to go against the grain of how you felt. But now as an adult, when you get to spirituality, you realize that how you feel really, really matters. It matters. It matters in your manifestation. It matters in your attracting ability. It matters. But all your life you was taught that it didn't matter. That you had to go to corporate, even in your job, you had to take it for the team. And you had to be a team player. And you had to show up and you, you had to sit there and, and get your performance review and let somebody tell you how you are. It's like you're not good enough. You weren't exceptional. You were just an average employee. But you bust your ass. <laughs> and so you had to walk out, you had to sign that paper and say how I feel doesn't matter. What you think of me matters more than what I think of me. And so then you get here in the spiritual thing like, oh, I don't. I don't even much know how I feel no more because I never really thought it mattered. It does. <laughs> and now you gotta relearn. Now you gotta forget all the stuff that the people told you, your boss and the doctor and the lawyer and your mama and your exes and all of that. And you gotta stand and look God face to face. And finally live. <laughs> yeah, right, because it will find you, yeah. We don't taste, we attract. Definitely, definitely. But wait, I wanted to add to somebody that says, um, can you get stuck? Yeah, but I wanted to add to that. And so this is where you bring in whatever your faith is when you're meditating. This is so important in the beginning. In the beginning, you want to bring whatever it is your faith is. Like if you have faith um, in like angels, like I came from religion. And so when I used to pray in religion, I would say, I... I send my angels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Sinclair with their blood, with their swords dipped in the blood, you know, because I was into Jesus at one point in my life, dipped in the blood to cut us under any spirit that is contrary to the word or the will of God, like, right? So that's what I did in religion. But when I began to meditate and I wasn't putting any outside deities in front of me, it was me and my relationship with my higher self, my God, my energetic essence that lives inside of me, right? And so to connect to it through a meditation, I bought that so-called angel, Michael, because I already had all this energy. I had already been praying for years in religion, saying, Michael, you're the warrior. Michael, you're powerful. Michael. So when I got into meditation in the beginning, I was like, I'm grounding myself. I can imagine myself grounded and anchored. And I'm imagining being anchored to this thing in the physical reality called Earth. Because see, grounding is about anchoring yourself here so that you do not end up in another dimension of your mind because your rabbit hole in your mind runs deep. So it's important to anchor or ground yourself by simply saying and believing that and thinking of something that will keep you grounded, meaning keep you returning back here in the physical reality. So you think of your husband, you think of your mother, you think of your job, you think of your children, you think of something that you love before you go into meditation, because guess what? It's gonna bring you back here. Those people who get lost in the sauce, be out there, they don't have no kind of reason to return here in their mental. So they're wobbling in their subconscious mind, going down rabbit holes, wee, 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 because they had no so-called love, connection, or groundiness about them. So I grounded myself by imagining myself returning after my meditation. I thought of my children, my husband, my mother, and I said, Michael is here energetically to protect me. 
You see? So you call on your guardian angel, your grandma, your grandpa, or whatever, at the door of your meditation. All of this is just energy. And so only reason why I'm saying this, I'm not telling y'all to go get no, no deities. Only reason why I'm saying this is because in the beginning, yes, I called on that source of energy because I had already in religion prayed that that source was protecting me already in Jesus name when I was in religion. So I just transferred the energy from religion to spirituality. I'm like, hey, Mike, I'm about to do a spiritual thing over here. I'm about to meditate. I don't know how this thing gonna go, but I gave you so much energy. You this here powerful for me already. So I'm gonna just use your name and I want you to be at the door because I want to come back into the physical reality. I don't want to get lost in the sauce like some of the people under the bridge losing themselves. I don't want to have this fear. So if you at the door, Mike, I know I'm gonna be fearless. You see what I'm saying? You use the energy and make it work for you. And you don't go up in there fearful. And you don't, you don't run away from it because of fear. You face them fears. You're like, nah, nah, nah. Mike been with me too long. <laughs> Mike been my angel too long here. Yeah? No, Mike, I don't see Mike to help me in church and religion. So I know Mike helping me in my spiritual walk. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to break that down so nobody gets scared of meditation because church will teach you that it's like of the devil. But getting to know yourself is not anything devilish unless you have some skeletons in your closet but regardless if you have skeletons in your closet you don't want to put them in your closet so that means you got to open up the door to the closet that you put the skeletons in and you got to let them come on out you got to deal with them face to face in order for you to find your peace in order for you to find christ consciousness in order for you to find yourself and get to know yourself okay i just had to add that to that part about the people under the bridge whatever okay i'm not um, really enlightened in that area i read that Right, because they will find you. Yeah. Yeah. I deny readers all the time. Yeah, yeah, just deny them. They go on, they're gonna go on to another duck. Another duck that's quacking and then it's gonna say yeah. And you know, and let them, you know, get what they need at that time because they need that lesson. She said the ancestors had a great message, but I wasn't quick to say yes. I just ignored the message. Yeah. Yeah, because you have your own messages. Talk that talk. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That. Wait, to thy own self be true. Oh, yeah. To thy own self be true. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for the confirmation. I'm still learning about that part of it. Yes, yes. Full arm of God. Yeah. Can you call them jump into the wrong realities? Yeah, I just discussed that. But, um, no, 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 no. Quantum jumping is something voluntarily... The, the what I was just talking about was getting kind of like into another reality, but quantum jumping is you using your human imagination to go there. So, why would you go to the wrong reality? No, no, it's a difference. You going, you quantum jumping, you're using your own human imagination to go to a place where you will see yourself maybe more healthy, more prosperous. So, no. No, because that's a controlled imagination. You thoughting it up. No. Mm -mm. Talk about it. Hey, Trey. Trey, don't stop by to see me, y'all. Come on, talk about it. I be like, I got this. <laughs> yeah, with the wrong thoughts and feelings. Yeah. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's okay. So, who's this? Yeah, vital uh, divinity is saying what I'm saying at the same time. You have the controlled imagination. So if it's controlled, no. But if you wild and out and have, if, like for example, if it's fearful and you don't have Michael there, then yeah, yeah, that way. But no, if it's controlled, you should not. That's why it's so important that you go through the phase of stillness and know how to control the imagination, control the mind first before you get into deeper levels so that you don't be wobbling. If you can't sit there for five minutes and look at this here, marker, and listen to your breath, then you shouldn't be trying to really quantum jump in no reality. Because when you get to that other reality and you get tested and you have a wobbling thought, the rabbit hole runs deep. And so one wobbling thought could lead you to another wobbling thought. And now you're wobbling all out of control in, in this spiral of negative thoughts. And so you, the first thought could be like, I wonder 
if I'm doing this right. Oh, this shit is scary. Then another thought, it's gonna get, get deeper and deeper. Oh, this shit is scary. Oh, it's dark up in here. Did I lock the front door? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm feeling something. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then you just start tripping out. <laughs> you know, oh, the devil up in here. Oh, I saw a black man. And oh, I ain't never doing that no more. But if you know how to control them thoughts, you right. Oh. Am I doing this right? Yeah, I'm doing this right. This is perfect. This is feeling good for me. Oh, it feels like bliss. It feels like heaven. It feels like joy. Oh, I feel myself um, ascending. Oh my God, this almost feels orgasmic. This feels so good. Oh my God, I don't know why I hadn't meditated before. Yes, I'm doing it right. This is perfect. All things are working out for me. All things are working out for me. Oh, I can imagine myself doing that, da, 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 da. And then you go into that spiral of thought instead. So that's why control of imagination is important. And no, you should not be able to jump into the wrong reality if your imagination is controlled. Because you're thinking it up. Double-minded person is unstable in all of its ways. You got to control, know how to control it first. Okay. Oh, Lord, they got a lot of comments. I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch up on this one here. Capitalism is, is in spirituality. Everyone has a word for the collective. Everybody, Trey. Everybody have a word. Yeah, you're welcome, God. Oh, my God. They got 67 comments. She didn't say anything about Okay. 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 I can't. I don't know if I bought that one. <laughs> Them comments just went all the way to the bottom. I'm sorry, I probably missed some things, but at the bottom it said she meant uh, shadow man and who is black anyway. I understand. Okay, I don't know you talking to somebody else. I know, just funny is so. all. Okay, continue, sister. Oh, okay. Okay, not the black man. I don't know what y'all talking about, about no black. Oh, the shadow man. Yeah, I was talking about the shadow, the shadow images I've seen before. Quantum jumping, learning how to pilot the ship first. Need a pilot. There you go. You need the pilot. Thank you so much. That makes so much sense of how you worded that. Thank you. You got to know how to be the pilot first before you get to jumping. You got to know. That's why in the beginning I talked about how do you breathe. I talked about how meditation stems on to being stillness. Then the controlled imagination and quantum jumping and then looping it and not falling asleep in it. Being so much of a master manifester that you can manipulate the energy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry about those other comments that I couldn't see. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Let me see if I can catch some of them. I'm blown away. You're making this so easy to understand. So grateful for you. Good, Nikki. I'm happy for you. People under that bridge equals put people under theory. They thought of their reality. Yep. There you go, element. They thought of their reality negatively and they got trapped in that particular loop. Like, right? Because they didn't know about stillness. They didn't know about breath and they just got caught up. But that was a choice though. That was a choice because oftentimes like people with all timers and things, their reality was bad memories. So they made a choice not to remember nothing no more. Everybody is making a choice. Everybody's making a choice. You got to learn how to respect people's choices. <laughs> I wish I could hug you. To feel your energy. Oh, hey, Street Builder. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Pamela, good afternoon, goddess. Hey, Jay Bake. You're so on point. I love it. Okay, I don't think I missed any questions up here. Yes, I understand. Is there a specific meditation you do? I'm at the level of, um, of um, the controlled imagination. That's really all I do now. And I loop it. So in the beginning of this video, when I upload it to YouTube, you understand what I mean by the four that I called out, the breathing, the stillness, the controlled imagination, and then the controlled imagination in looping it. And so that's the level that I'm in right now. And I do that every night, every morning. And sometimes I quantum jump during the day because of those things that I have for my subconscious mind to bring to me. So that's the only type of meditation that I do at this point. My, um, so maybe what well, yesterday I did mindfulness on um, a TikTok to teach people that it was like stillness when I was sitting up in a call about deep, um, taking deep breaths. But 
But I'm, I'm in a place in my physical reality where I love my life. I was just telling my guy friend yesterday, I'm like, man, I love my life. I mean, I love everything about my life, everything that I do, because I do nothing that I no longer don't want to do. I'm living my passion and I love my freaking life. Yeah. So with loving my life, I don't feel like I need to, um, you know, do much of anything. You know, my deep breaths present to me, you know, um, sit outside in the sun sent to me, you know, like everything I do, uh, making my products, that's sent to me. Listen to music when I'm making my products. I love making my products. I love healing people. I love consulting with people. I love doing TikTok live. I love uploading to YouTube. I love it. I love it. I love it. Meeting, meeting new people. I love working out. I love golfing. I love cycling. I love my Zumba class. I love my commit class. I love my ultimate conditioning class. I love my body. I love life. I love the sun. I love living in the desert. I love my house. I love my family. I love, love, love. I love my life. So it's like when you're in that love and that passion state of being, it's like meditation. My whole life is a damn meditation day. <laughs> ain't nothing but stillness, you know? I love, like, sometimes I sit in an in empty room, you know, because I don't have a living room set just yet, and I don't really want to get one right now because I love this emptiness, this stillness, because I sit up in here and I just, I could just think all kind of good thoughts. Because I'm in love. My cup run is over. So, yeah. Not being braggadocious. I'm just, just, just sharing uh, um, answer to the question. So let's see. Um, what else is down here? Ooh, the story of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Complete satisfaction. Yeah. What's your YouTube? Sorry, the earth publishing is my YouTube. It's in my, um, that's actually a deja vu for me. That's beautiful. It's in my um, profile link the black triangle if you click on my um picture in tiktok it'll bring you directly to my youtube if you click that black triangle it's a youtube button so yeah thank you i will go to your youtube after yeah do that when i when i did it caught me off guard and how sudden things move you missed all mine oh i missed all your um happy to be here no problem who that is um pamela did i miss all your comments let me see if I can scroll back up here. Because it was like 67 of the things. Let's see. Oh, I see one for you. Honest story. I jumped out of my body and moved through the 5D and jumped back in. Oh, okay. I know that felt amazing. I had many experiences like that. And it felt amazing. And I, and I came back in the physical form. And I was like, how I look? Am I normal? Do I look normal? Is everything okay? Is everything okay? Because I was like on a different energetic speed, so to speak. Woo! It felt like bliss. Like, I'm blown away. You're making this easy to understand. So grateful for you. Okay, I read that one. Let me see if I go up a little bit more. Is there a specific meditation you do? Yeah, I read that one already. Um, So the controlled imagination. I'm gonna go up so much. You're such a beautiful spirit. Thank you. You are too. I'm a reflection of you. I literally manifested with you what I already am in the physical. Yeah, we all did. Everything everything that you see in your physical reality right now is a reflection of your older thoughts, right? That's a scam. They distract you with all that BS to keep you focused on the outward. Yeah, yeah. Trey said that. Let's see. Manifesting physical lessons, parables for understanding. Have to go look at all artifacts to await. Yeah, yeah. Not have to, but it'll be beautiful if you could do that. Hence why I left the workforce. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I got up out of there too. I got out of there too. Um, Vina? Vina. The new. I can't say it again. I thought I said it right the first time. But you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Hello. I retired from a, a market research company. It's another form of quantum jumping. Oh, that sounds cool. That sounds really cool and interesting. Yeah, that's so deep. Let's see. All right, I think I caught up on everything. Uh-huh, I did. Gratitude, second time joining your live, love. Oh, okay, hey, P. Ross Sun. Oh, we got Ross Sun up in here. The Lord thy God is a sun and shield. I like that name. I'm going to pass on it as of now. Okay. New Orleans by the tongue. Hey, Jeep. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it right, love. Yeah, got caught up. Okay. All right, I went back. All right. I went back. Now I'm going back down to this bottom. Okay. I could call you V. Okay, good. V. Because I, I know I wasn't doing it right. But I was trying, though. It's the movie Jump. 
have something to do with that. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me see. I think I covered everything. Any more questions down here? Uh, kind of like driving to stay between the lines. Oh, y'all talking to each other. Okay. Something snatched me back. Yeah. What do, what do you mean something snatched you back? You snatch you back? <laughs> There's nothing that exists but you, God. It, it, it's kind of hard to um, get our the best in TikTok. Hands down. Oh, thank you, babe. Just to think, just last year, I was overworked doing everything I didn't, yet it didn't satisfy you. And that's you being us, not just you, because I did it too for a long time. That's us being out of alignment with ourselves. So what do you think that snatched you back? Because we're all that exists. I always get distracted. Yeah, you, you're going to get it. You got to keep on practicing, Blue Diamond. You got to look at this um, YouTube video that I'm going to upload, and, I'll, and it'll tell you in the beginning. It's good to hear you say the good feelings because bad feelings are capitalized. They really are. But if you think about it, like it's almost like when people get high, you know, you ever been around somebody that was loaded, like, you know, with weed or whatever, and it's like life um, for them is like slowed down. You could tell that it's slowed down because they're like, they like to look at squirrels and little, you know, birds. And they, they, they be like, oh, man, you tripping. Like, right? And so for some of those people, they find the joy in just the simple things like the bird and the, and the squirrel. And, and they'll use that, that particular high to go be talented. They'll use it to maybe go draw something or maybe make music or something some of them get in a flow like that you know some of the rappers do that like right but within that flow you could go either way and so then they'll have these other people that get high and then they get so chaotic when they hide they want to fight and they want to they think you know something is out to get them and then they want to make music about your mama is a bee and and da 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 and life is sucks and da 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 Everybody has a mind and they have a so-called rabbit hole that they can go down. Now, the rabbit hole could be delightful or it can be hell. It can be heaven or hell based upon what are they thinking. That's all. And in that hell, this is the trip part about it. If they decide to create hell, all they need to do is change the thought to a positive thought in order to create heaven on their high. All they have to do is change the thoughts. And this is what the biblical text is telling you too. By the renewing of your mind, <laughs> let this mind be in you. It's telling you that over and over. Then it's pertaining to whatever you're quantum jumping toward, whatever you are thinking of, whatever you bring into your physical reality through meditation practice. Let it be a good thought. That's all it's telling you. Yeah, renewing of the mind. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, I am, I'm only can quantum jump when I am in sober state of mind. Never done it if I was drinking. Oh, well, I don't mean drinking, because really for drinking, drinking kind of like um, is an astringent, like alcohol. It works as an astringent to take the Lord to part of you away from you. So you end up being in zombie mode. A lot of people end up being depressed when drinking. I meant something that's going to assimilate trimethyltryptamine inside of you. And meditation does that by itself. So you don't necessarily have to be drinking. You know, some people get to this stage when they are high off of like marijuana is what I meant, but not drinking at all. That's like a Debbie Downer. That's really a depressive state of being. And this is why when you look at those people, they look like in their eyes, they look like ghosted, like, right? Because their spiritual essence has been stripped from them. And this is why we really should not even be indulging if we're trying to reach Christ consciousness into, you know, the alcohol. Really do this already. Anything that happens outside of you, God, you already have the ability to do inside of you. Because just like the marijuana plant, for example, it gets you into that good feeling, like zone where you think you can meditate great, greater. But if you were to practice and evolve in your meditation practices, you are naturally going to be able to secrete your own dimethyltryptamine that'll take you on an euphoria type trip out of this world, out of this galaxy type trip that I have experienced. And I'm not telling you anything that I read by yourself you have the power to become the i am lucy 
by yourself without any drug or any type of stimulant, you know, naturally. Because <laughs> as within, so without. So if the marijuana plant exists that can do that, if the mushrooms exist that can do that, guess what? You are the creator of the mushroom. Just this is like why I tell people with those crystals and all, you always remember that you're the most powerful crystal that you'll ever own. Because if the crystal has this power to clear energy, guess what? You are the creator of the crystal. So that means you can clear your energy without the crystal. If the amethyst has the ability to help you with love, guess what? You are love. You are the creator of the amethyst. You are, you know, or I'm sorry, the rose quartz or the amethyst having the ability to help you with your Christ consciousness. You are the amethyst. So you're the creator of it. You're the creator of all of these things as within, so without. Nothing can exist. At least you brought forth life to make it exist. At least it is a part of you, God. You are everyone pushed out. And everything that you think people are going to do out in your physical reality, they shall do because you thought it into existence. You are the one that said, let there be through your thought, through your habitual thought, through the thoughts of your subconscious mind. You might not remember all of your thoughts because you think so much every day, <laughs> but you're thinking all of this stuff up. So don't lose sight of your true power. Because oftentimes we look for power and we look for love. We look for all kinds of things outside of ourselves. When the kingdom of God, everything is within you. Okay. So I've been here longer than I've ever, I think, been on a lot before. So I'm about to end this thing. I see everything so clearly now. Thank you. I'm so grave, grateful. It's up. From here, oh yeah, babe, oh my God, you're here to remind us. Yeah, and remember, remember, just wow, alchemy, baby. It's true, alchemy, yeah. It just rem I'm here to just remind you that you're God, that's it, point, point, point blank, period. I ain't here for none of that other stuff. Through our words, power, the spoken word, yeah, it's power in that spoken word, right. Okay, in real time, as a matter of fact, yeah, oh my God, I love you so much as I manifest you every day. See how conversation justifies that okay but yeah so that's that's it um thank you have a wonderful day thank you much yeah okay so that's it that's the video i'm probably have to chop some of this here off before i um I'm the, some of the end of this off to upload it to my youtube channel but anyway nonetheless that's what i'm here for to remind you that you're god i'm just your thoughts your subconscious thoughts every last one of you that made this here um video you thought this up already, and that's why it came to you. It's not no algorithms or whatever like you think. You're thinking up your life, God. Empower yourself. Tell yourself, thank you for giving me the answer today. You're saying thank me, but thank yourself for your subconscious mind speaking to you, through me, to give you the answer for meditation practices that you needed. Give the power back to you. I am not here to be nobody leader. I don't want nobody following me. No, you follow your own self. A true leader will always lead you back to you. You're God. You're God having a human experience. You're a God. You are love. You are worthy. You're everything that you think you're looking for outside of you. You are it. And if you find somebody in that physical reality of yours trying to send you somewhere that is outside of you, do not go because you have everything already. You are everything already. Stand firm and believe that you're powerful. Thought by thought by thought by thought. Check out my website if you guys want to buy any body butters, beard oils, do any consultations if you led to. If not, baby, go on your way. But I do have a website. It's in my bio also. www.soulofthearthpub.org I'm about to go sit outside underneath the sun and give me some energy in the desert. And y'all have a good day. <laughs> be, bye. be blessed, babe. Bye.